Welcome back. The Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of State for Investment of the United Kingdom, Lord Dominic Johnson of Leadstone at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of long-standing relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom and noted Bahrain's commitment to strengthening relations, especially with regard to economic and investment ties, so that joint goals can be achieved in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Deputy King highlighted the promising investment opportunities available to the two countries, which are supported by a range of bilateral agreements. His Royal Highness noted Bahrain's commitment to further bolstering its investment environment by providing a wide-ranging facilities to attract cross-sector investment, which will benefit the Kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of building on the Kingdom's economic and investment achievements to ensure further economic progress, productivity and development. During the meeting, the regional and global developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhru, also attended the meeting. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, the SEH Lieutenant General, Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, lauded the success of the Bahrain's primary healthcare centres in obtaining the Diamond Level Accreditation by Accreditation Canada International, the ACI, for its excellence in meeting the standards of primary health services. The President hailed the support of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Amman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to develop the health system. He added that this accreditation for primary health care centres requires a series of comprehensive evaluation stages carried out by a neutral and independent body to determine the extent of the health institution's commitment to quality and patient safety standards. One success after another has been achieved by the Kingdom of Bahrain to add to its record of achievements at the global level, and now it has achieved a new success in the field of primary health care. Bahrain has obtained diamond accreditation for primary health care centers for the second time, adding to the record of health centers that have been obtained Canadian accreditation for four consecutive times. I take the opportunity on this very delightful day to really... Uh, uh, acknowledge my appreciation and my greetings to all the workers in the primary health care for this great achievement uh, to get the Canadian uh, accreditation uh, of a diamond uh, status is something really we have to appreciate it and we have to be proud about it. Diamond accreditation is one of the highest levels of accreditation, which highlights the quality of health services provided, most notably patient safety and the ease and smoothness of obtaining various services with high effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, today we are, we are celebrating a very important and a good achievement uh, for the primary health care in Bahrain. And this is a worldwide recognition. It's uh, by the Canadian and we got the diamond which is uh, the top uh, recognition for that. Bahrain, is, uh, this achievements came under the, 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 the wise management of Bahrain, uh, uh, that all the people, the primary care, uh, people who are working in primary care are Bahraini, from doctor, from nurses, from all, and they are of the top quality. The high professionalism enjoyed by the health sector employees in the centers confirms the extent of the care and attention that the government of the kingdom attaches to excellence in the health sector and providing the best services in the field of primary health care to all patients. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Ziani, here the deep rooted historical relations and comprehensive partnership between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the development they witness under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. The Minister expressed Bahrain's pride in celebrating the 93rd Saudi National Day, which stems from the deep fraternal ties binding the two countries and an appreciation for the Saudi policy in the Arab and Islamic nations, as well as its role in consolidating regional and global security, peace and prosperity, and combating extremism and terrorism, as well as providing humanitarian aid. 
Dr Asiani hailed the two governments' keenness on active cooperation and partnership in light of the initiatives of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister of Foreign Bahrain stands in support of Saudi Arabia in all the steps it takes to maintain regional security and stability, settle regional and international disputes with peaceful means, and its support to the Saudi diplomatic and development initiatives at the regional and international levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdel Latif Al Ziani, met with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The Minister conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the Secretary General's efforts to enhance international cooperation and support the efforts of Member States to achieve the UN goals and establish the foundations of security, peace and development. For his part, the UN Secretary General asked the Minister of Foreign Affairs to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his wishes for Bahrain of continued progress and prosperity. He expressed appreciation for Bahrain's contribution to international efforts and the achievements made through the sustainable development process. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed appreciation of bilateral cooperation and ways to strengthen and develop them in a manner that supports the Kingdom's efforts in achieving the UN goals and objectives. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the President of the 75th, 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Dennis Francis. The Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Imam bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the President of the current session and wished him success in his duties. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to reinforce the cooperation with the UN and its different bodies to achieve common goals. The two sides also discussed topics of mutual interest. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, paid a visit to the Saudi Investment Centre affiliated to the Ministry. The Minister affirmed that celebrating the Saudi National Day stems from the unity and strong brotherly ties binding the two kingdoms. He praised the numerous achievements made by Saudi Arabia in all fields. He congratulated the Saudi King and Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the occasion, as well as the Saudi people. He also praised the bilateral historical relations and cooperation in all fields. The Northern Governors held a Bahrain Atta on King Fahad Causeway to welcome the arrival of the Brothers of Saudi Arabia for the Kingdom of Bahrain in the celebration of the National Day of Saudi Arabia. The organisation of this event comes due to the nature of the relations between the two kingdoms, which remain a permanent witness to the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Bahrain's keenness to celebrate Saudi National Day every year embodies the depth of the fraternal ties and solid constants that unite the two countries and their peoples, stemming from the unity, history and one common destiny. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities continues its preparations for the launch of the Bahrain International Music Festival in its 32nd edition, whose activities begin on the 1st to the 20th of October. This festival includes evenings and concerts by participants from various Gulf, Arab and international countries. In cooperation with the General Secretariat of the GCC, the Kingdom is hosting, in conjunction with the 32nd Bahrain International Music Festival, the Gulf Music and Folk Arts Festival where a group of popular musical groups from the GCC, Jordan and Morocco will contribute as guests of honour, enhancing the festival's programme with different styles. Several Bahraini IT managers were honoured at the World CIO 200 Grand Finale. Various countries and organisations participated to honour innovators and pioneers in the field of information technology. The grand finale event was announced by the organising committee of the Khaled bin Hamad Innovation Artificial Intelligence Competition following the success of the second Bahrain Awards Ceremony for CEOs held last month under the patronage of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, 
chairman of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Five Bahraini managers were honoured for their contribution to Bahrain's IT sector and their leadership role in dig digital transformation projects. Bahrain's vision to adopt modern technologies in artificial intelligence resulted in improving the quality of life and facilitating access to all government services for citizens and residents. Bahrain made a number of honourable achievements in the digital space as it has taken deliberate steps on the utilisation of artificial intelligence in various fields. The Kingdom's approach to artificial intelligence aims to benefit all segments of society, including citizens, residents, companies and tourists, in addition to achieving Bahrain's Vision 2030, which aims to transform it into a global centre for innovation and technology. Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan, affirming Saudi Arabia's keenness to support all efforts aimed at establishing security and stability. Speaking on behalf of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, before the UNGA, the Foreign Affairs Minister said all nations must honour the UN Charter, including the non-use of force and respect for human rights, non-interference in a country's internal affairs and res resolving disputes by peaceful means. The Saudi Foreign Minister added that regional security requires a just solution to the Palestinian issue, allowing for an independent state and considering the unilateral measures that violate international law. Prince Faisal said security and stability are not possible without cooperation and coordination between states. The United Arab Emirates has called for a decisive and coordinated international response to the urgent threat of global water scarcity in a comprehensive discussion paper. Published by the UAE's Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York, the paper aims to serve as a global call to action to work together in new ways to address the emerging challenge of global water scarcity. Entitled Ripple Effect, Water Scarcity, the Hidden Threat to Global Security and Prosperity, it examines global water scarcity and its main causes, highlights various implications of water scarcity already evident in parts of the world, and pinpoints a range of potential solutions to this rapidly worsening issue. The paper outlines how 4 billion people experience water scarcity at least one month a year, with this figure expected to grow in the years ahead. Despite this, the paper outlined how global water scarcity does not currently receive the same public attention and financial investment as other risks, such as climate change and future pandemics. UAE Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed said, as a result, the international community is lagging in its efforts to confront this challenge with potentially grave outcomes. He said all must seek new ways to quickly and effectively cooperate in addressing the significant global issue. The GCC Secretary General Ajaz Mohamed Al Badawi met with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, at the United Nations headquarters on the sidelines of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. Guterres expressed his appreciation for the GCC country's efforts regionally and internationally to achieve peace and in many issues. He lauded the GCC member states' humanitarian and development endeavours in many regions worldwide. The meeting also reviewed cooperation between the GCC and the UN and the latest international developments of common interest aimed at enhancing international peace and security. Al Badawi lauded the efforts made by the UN General Assembly in coordinating and preparing for the 70th session of the UN General Assembly. A simple coffee van is helping homeless people in Perth, Australia, make a new way of life for themselves. It becomes a community service, training people, enabling them to socialise with others and ultimately helping them get jobs. More in this report. This coffee van is not just any pit stop for refreshment. The people running it needed a bit of help. Those joining the van get trained as baristas and some even get paid. 
Two years after its launch, the van has helped train more than 50 homeless people, and five of them are now employed for the day-to-day -day operations. For somebody to, to be able to go out there and get a job with the skills that they've learned on the van will hopefully uh, you know, enable them to, 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 to build that money up and get back into housing or a private rental themselves. According to Grow and Grind, more people are being pushed towards homelessness by the soaring cost of private rentals and mortgages, along with increases in inflation and interest rates. Dealing with homelessness with coffee cups may sound simplistic, but the people behind Grow and Grind say it's the job, the earnings and the skills that come with the coffee that make all the difference. What we'll do is try and alleviate some of the pressure that so many people are going through and also try and stop more people falling into homelessness. The organization is now looking to find a brick and mortar space to turn into a cafe to start employing more people than the van allows.